Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell and we're going to continue looking at our management styles. This is the second video of our management styles where we're going to look at the consultative, participative and laissez-faire management styles. So we move on to the consultative management style now, which is where the manager seeks feedback from the employees before they make the final decision themselves. So what the manager does, they seek feedback from the employees, they try and use that feedback to try and make a more informed or a stronger decision. So the characteristics is that is that there's now two-way communication. That's very different to the first two styles that we went through where there was one-way communication. Now there's two-way communication, which means that there's communication flowing from the manager to the employee and also from the employees to the manager. However, the manager still makes the decision, meaning that it is still centralized decision-making. But now discussions are encouraged before that manager makes the final decision. Now some weaknesses, it's more time consuming now because there's more uh, communication and more discussion around before decisions are actually made. So it be, does take more time than the previous, the autocratic and the persuasive styles. Now, if some ideas are going to be overlooked and that's likely to happen, that can cause resentment. So just think if an employee puts their ideas forward and the other employees have put their ideas forward, but one particular employee, you know, their idea doesn't end up in the end result, then they may feel some kind of resentment towards that. And also there may be employees, they may not have the, the best skills or experience or knowledge to actually contribute. And so they may feel uncomfortable if they're using a, if a manager's using consultative style all the time, if the employees don't really have knowledge or experience, they may feel a little bit uneasy in order to contribute. So if we look at when it's best, again, looking at the three key areas where we look at time, well, now we need more time available in the consultative style. So it's best when there is a little bit more time to sort of discuss issues and discuss uh, problems before and, and gaining that feedback. Also, if the employees have some experience and knowledge that the manager can sort of use to get a really, to make a really informed decision and get that feedback. And also, if the tasks are more complex or there's some kind of problem solving that needs to be nutted out, then all of a sudden, it's a really good style to use so that their manager can again gain that feedback before making a final decision. Now the participative management style is where the manager now joins in with staff to make decisions. So there's a real decision making authority being shared amongst the manager and employees where they join in together to make those decisions together. So some of the key characteristics is that there's two way communication again. So from manager to employee and employees to manager. But now the employees are able to make decisions so they're heavily involved. Not only is the manager seeking feedback but the employees are able to join in and help make decisions with the manager and we call that decentralized decision making. So all of a sudden now information is shared amongst the employees. So if we move to the strengths, well now that there's a real high level of trust uh, amongst the employees, the manager really trusts the employees and their ideas and also enables them to make decisions. So there's a high level of trust there. They're able to gain a larger pool of ideas. There's a strong relationship between the manager and the employees and all this results in higher motivation because all the employees now are heavily involved in decision making. So they're really getting a say in, in what goes on within the business that they're working in. And they're more receptive to change because they will be involved in the decision making around that and also the employees are gaining more experience by making decisions and learning from the manager in terms of discussing uh, how what decisions need to be made so they it helps develop their skills and experience however the weaknesses is that now it is again even more time consuming because there can be lots of discussion lots of time spent discussing and and even arguing about different ideas and different decisions so that can also cause conflicts due to disagreements between the manager and, the, and all the different employees that are involved in the decision making process about what the best decision is. Also, um, more time on actually forming decisions and less time completing work. So if they're getting together and having meetings and talking about, you know, actually what decision to make, well, there's sometimes there can be too much time spent actually forming to making the decisions rather than actually doing the work. And also the manager's role may be undermined slightly because all of a sudden the employees, you know, feel like they can just go and make their own decisions. Now the participating management style is best when there's more time available because again it's, t it's time consuming to go through all these discussions and, and go through the whole decision making process. Also the employee should be experienced and knowledgeable so that the manager can trust their ideas and also you know pass over some authority to make decisions. And the nature of the task often it's best when it's similar to the consultative where ideas need to be uh, discussed so therefore you know problem solving more complex tasks uh, is when it can be best and often during times of change also or when there's creativity required because if there is change and 
the participative can be better when uh, because the employees are actually gaining involvement in the decision making process and therefore they're more likely to be accepting of the change. So the laissez-faire management style is where the manager gives the employees full responsibility for the operations and the decision making in terms of how they're going to operate day to day. Now the management may actually make a decision about the direction of the business and also set the objectives for the employees in terms of targets that they need to achieve. However, it's up to the employees to decide on how they're going to run the day to day operations and make the decisions to, to achieve those particular objectives. So some key characteristics, there's two way communication between the manager and the employee, but you could also argue that there's horizontal communication amongst the employees where they work together and don't have to report upwards necessarily too often. So they're working together and communicating on the same level with employees on the same level. Um, the employees are fully empowered to make decisions. So it is you know, completely decentralized decision making. And the manager is only really involved if they're asked to, uh, if they're asked from the employees or to set the parameters like the budget or the deadline or the specific objective initially. And some of the benefits of the laissez-faire is that the employees feel a sense of ownership because they've got full autonomy to make decisions about uh, how they're going to achieve the objectives, can create a high level of motivation because of that. Lots of creativity is encouraged, uh, communication completely open, especially between the employees, and it encourages teamwork for the employees to work together so that, you know, as I said, the manager may set the objective and then, you know, possibly a team works together, a really talented team can work together to actually achieve their objective. However, there's a complete loss of management control, which can result in the possible misuse of company resources or business resources. And also there can be conflict among workers, you know, because sometimes a hierarchy in terms of the employees can play out and can actually become apparent. And that's not really what it's designed to do. And also as a result of misusing resources and leaving the employees up to making decisions, the overall business objectives can sometimes be lost. Now the laissez-faire can be best in lots of different scenarios. So sometimes it can be appropriate in both time pressure. So if the you know to try and delegate tasks to the employees in terms of if you trust them to make decisions, that can help speed up time and and therefore when there's less time available, but also when there's lots of time available for them to work at their own pace and really solve very complex issues. In the in terms of employee experience, that the manager would want the skills to be the sorry the employees to be highly skilled so that they're trusted to take full control. And as I said before full autonomy and sometimes it can be really uh, a really good style to use when there's a high level of creativity required the type of task where the employees you know let them do their best works get out of the set the objective but get out of their way and enable them to make decisions about how best to go forward so that you know really using the skills and experience to be creative from the employees so for questions activities and to find out more about our second exam preparation lectures then come on over to teachingbubble.com